cracking on let's talk about the doja cat again doja cat is out here annoying fans <laughs> annoying everybody really with this one woman mission to essentially burn the boats which i have to love and i can't hate because i am somebody who you know i'm a fan of chaos or chaos principle in general right i love the idea of just being purposely <laughs> annoying and trying to kind of you know stir up trouble just for the sake of it just because you know why not life is boring day to day why not try and make things a little bit interesting by you know mixing <laughs> things up a little bit i'm not really that you know i you know i don't mind it i don't mind a little bit of chaos for your life i think that keeps you a little bit honest but i have to be honest with this and say i'm a little bit bored with this whole doja cat trying to paint herself as a victim narrative going on because it's not that deep i don't think so personally i feel like yes some of her fans were being annoying and they were having weird you know parasocial relationships with her that she clearly wasn't comfortable with i understand it but i think most fans aren't like that that's just a very small contingent of your fan base that's why people call them stands because stands are make up a majority of anyone's fan base even Nicki minaj even big tiktok artists gen you know most generic so most general fans, normie fans who like you, just like you for what you put out, they might want to say hi, they might want to autograph, but that's where it starts and that's where it stops. So it's never that deep. I feel like some of the fans just went into acknowledgement and just went to one and they just wanted kind of a reciprocation, right? They went to feel as if like the love that they put in for supporting her, she was somehow reciprocating back, but I guess she was in a bad mood and she didn't want to feel like she was being told to do anything or whatever it may be, who knows? But either way, I'm just bored of it. So. There's this recent article, Curtis of Harper's Bazaar, where Doja Cat did an amazing, um, you know, cover story and an interview with it. She looks fantastic in clothes. I think everyone can say she knows how to take a fucking good pose picture. She can pose her fucking ass off. She looks great in clothes. Um, and yeah, she just, you know, the camera loves Doja Cat. We can't deny that. She looks fucking incredible in everything that she wears for the most part. No one can deny. So um, I want to get to some of her answers regarding how she feels about the fans and stuff as you scroll by some of the pictures on the shoot and here's it is so it starts off here here's the question right you definitely push boundaries why do you think people go crazy when you do things like shave your head or your eyebrows before she answers i will say i don't think people go crazy it's just surprising to most people out there because i think most people maybe project a little bit and think hey if i look like doja cat would i purposely try and uglyfy myself or man repeller myself to kind of divert the male gaze probably not right most people wouldn't do that they look at doja cat they think she's a gorgeous woman and think you know what why is she doing this to herself this is weird she's shocking but that's where it starts and that's where it ends it's not that deep i think she's also looking into it way deeper than what it actually is most people just you know say it because you know when you bleach your eyebrows or you shave your head it's kind of a radical look you're going especially if you're a woman you know cutting off all your hair is a big thing um there's a lot of symbolism behind you know the hair in general and obviously women have a lot of att attachments and a lot of you know of their identity is tied up in how they look and their hair and stuff so when you cut that off it's shouldn't it be surprising that regular people that don't know you just from the outside of just seeing you it could be a little bit of a shock to get used to same thing if your fucking dad you grew up with decides to cut off his mustache one day because he's feeling cute it can get take time to get to get used to it right look at some of the videos out there that exist or toddlers you know reaction to their dad shaving their fucking moustache it can be quite traumatic so you know it's not that big of a deal but also you have to understand why people are maybe sometimes shocked because you know it's just not what they're used to seeing from people who look like doja cat going out of the way to do but again let's go to her answer doja cat's answer about why do you think people go crazy when she shaves her head and eyebrows doja cat says my theory is that if someone has never met me in real life then subconsciously i'm not real to them so when some people so when people become engaged with someone they don't even know on the internet they kind of take ownership over that person <laughs> they think that that person belongs to them in some way and when that person changes drastically there is a shock response that is almost uncontrollable i've accepted that that's what happens so i put my wigs on and take them off i shave my head or my eyebrows i have all the freedom in the world now I think again she's bugging. I don't think it's that deep. I think most people root for their favorite artists the way that anybody would root for their favorite team. It's just somebody that you love and support and you want to see them shine and do well. I don't think anybody has an image 
no, actually, maybe people do. Maybe we all have images of people of how they are, and then it changes when you meet them in real life. I think we even have that with some people that are members of our family that we don't probably know too well. You have an idea of what they're like, then you meet them in person, and then you know they either confirm, dispel, or they confuse. It's just one of those things. So it's not too surprising that that tends to happen to her online. I just feel like for some reason, she seems to be wrestling with the idea of being a celebrity a lot, clearly, because from what I've been able to gauge online and from things I've heard, you know, through different people, even someone like a house phone who said he was around Doja Cat early on and stuff, she's always wanted to be famous. She's always wanted to be an artist. She's always wanted to be signed on a label, all that stuff, right? Popular. It's always been a plan of hers and it never kind of worked out along the way. There's many videos of her you can see of her freestyling and shit when she's younger, trying to make it. And, you know, it finally has made it, but maybe her idea of what fame would be of what being a pop star would be is different to what it is in the day to day. And she's having trouble kind of coming to grips with it, which is understandable. And then she also lives in like, you know, this era with stan culture and shit. It makes sense why she's kind of a little bit conflicted, but she needs to relax. She needs to really does need to relax and take it easy. Most fans just want to feel like the support that they're putting into her is somehow replic rep replicate replicated in some ways or, or reciprocated sorry in the sense that you know she's acknowledging them she's thanking them for their support because in a weird way i feel like the ownership thing is, is interesting that she mentioned that because in a weird way fans taking ownership of pushing you promoting you and talking about you all the time can sometimes help with your career to get you noticed but then i guess in some ways she's also saying that after a while, it can get annoying because they then feel like they are responsible for your success, which I know just hearing it sounds fucking ridiculous because you're the artist. If you didn't, if you didn't exist, they wouldn't exist. So it's like, no, you're actually the most important person. But in this day and age where there's like a million artists, you have to admit too, fans do play a big role in people's success if you don't have fans you have to rely on the label and the machine to kind of pop you forward and no one wants to be you know no one wants to be a plant anyway but you can't deny the fans influence and part that they play in people's success so in some ways you kind of have to kiss the ring from time to time and just keep them sweet or just be cordial in, in you know you can think what you want to think privately but i think in public it just it doesn't hurt to just be cordial and let them know how much you've you know so you know, appreciate their support because in general if the fans stop fucking with you you don't have a career and i don't think those just going to be making music for no money especially after having money and fame then going back to having no money and fame is not going to happen so all the stuff that she says can sometimes feel like she's full of shit because if you don't like it, then stop making the music and go back to working a regular job. Do you know what I mean? It's not that deep really, but I guess this era of musicians are just conflicted overall and it's just, they're just processing in real time. And also I can't imagine how it must be to be a star of her level nowadays at that age. You know what I mean? It just must be a whole different challenge day to day to kind of make that work so i have sympathy for her in some respects but i do think it's getting a little bit boring hearing her talk about how much she hates her fans like okay we get it like move on um what else it says here what uh, what do you imagine is next for you she says there are all kind of projects i want to branch into uh, I want to, oh, of course, every every musician does this. Every service. She says, I want to explore making clothes, dabbling makeup, and I want to explore acting. Of course you do. Everyone wants to do acting. I would love to do movies that I believe in. I would have to step in, stop me doing music for a minute, but I would be down to immerse myself in acting for a certain period of time. Um, I want to learn martial arts and be in a film like John Wick. Is it true that you do stand, you could do a handstand? No, that you want to do stand up. It's something I've definitely considered. I actually went on stage recently with Craig Robinson. He would get on the piano and I'd just play songs, but he would do his own thing. In a funny ass way, I went on stage and sang with him at a comedy club. <laughs> oh, at a comedy club, sorry. I was super low key, but I was there with one of my boyfriends. Lowell's at one of my boyfriends. So yeah, that's cool. That's that's pretty funny, to be fair. To, to end an answer talking about comedy with a joke. Or maybe it's not a joke, who knows? But for sure, one thing we can be certain all of these boyfriends are caucasian which i think again this is something that's really odd for me because usually i don't care about this sort of stuff because i'm all about the art but i have to admit like maybe because it's a personal thing but it's always irked me this whole like i only date white guys thing she's never said it but judging by her 
slew of boyfriends they all look white so you know it's safe to say that doja doesn't fuck with black people or black boys sorry not people black boys i'll take that back which you might have a reason to right i think you're allowed to have conflicted somewhat problematic opinions of your own race if you've had really bad experiences because she's mixed race right so imagine if her father or whoever is mixed in her parents so whoever's black in her you know what side of parent they are imagine if that person's a real piece of shit and cause them nothing but heartache and trouble it's okay for her to also carry that into her personal life and think you know what i don't want nothing to do with no black guy because this black guy but you know a black guy who happened to be my dad broke my mom's heart destroyed my family stole money did this did this i can understand it but still a part of me just get can't get past how lame and almost weird it is to say you only date white people i've got i've got that a lot with some people especially when i used to meet girls out and about and you know sometimes if it was a caucasian lady that say something like yeah i'm only really into black guys i only date black dudes and in the moment you just entertain the conversation because you know you're a boy and you have your needs but it would always make me fucking it would always make my skin crawl it would always give me the ick hearing somebody say they only date black it's like what is what does that even mean so you're c- completely cutting yourself from from everybody else who isn't that race because what because you're fetishizing black people because you think they have a it's just whatever it's just bizarre to me how people can limit themselves to only one race in terms of dating everyone's got preferences i understand that but completely ruling people out is bizarre um personally i just don't really understand what that's about and um there must be something also in the fact that not not to be offensive also but a lot of her kind of white boyfriends are like what you would say mid right looking wise so i wonder if there's this sort of like i wonder man because she's obviously attractive i wonder if there's this um self-loathing sort of aspect to it where you purposely go for like you know you, you shed yourself of whatever you know trinkets and attractiveness bits that you had about you that men liked so you shit yourself for the male gaze then you persic- then you purposely only go for a certain type of dude and then you specifically go for a certain type of dude for a certain type of race but also it looks a certain type of way like somebody that you some most people wouldn't expect you to be into so it's sort of like you know again like unconventional look at me don't look at me type of thing because you, i'd imagine most people if they saw those cat walking down the street with her boyfriends they, they double take not because you know she's there obviously but because of the contrast like raw that boy looks like a fucking gargoyle and you look like that how that happened so i can understand that side of things but i don't know there's just something about it just kind of irks me the wrong way um she said the following um one of my boyfriends is funny she says yeah i love i love love i'm possibly a serial data i definitely have had in me a little bit but right now i'm in a different place in my life where i'm very committed and very much in love in different way than before i think i've evolved i'm learning to love myself so the way that i love other people is very different i don't feel like i've lost a little t- i don't feel like a lost little teen i like i love i feel like a woman who is coming into her own so yeah fair play to her the shoot like i said looks amazing dojo's cat's always going to stun when it comes to putting on a good outfit and taking a good picture she's very very photogenic and just generally knows how to pose and sort of like manipulate her body in a great way on camera and just great i love all of it but yeah there's something about the constant fucking i hate my fans thing that's kind of a little bit boring in my personal opinion but again i could be wrong and i could be chatting on my own ass who knows who bloody knows